So you'll find in the latest version of the slide deck, uh, the self-reported attendance. So these are, uh, this is what you told us in the session one feedback. Thank you for those of you who were able to complete that. This is a key step um, and the certification requirements. So uh, unfortunately, if you missed it, um, there is no extension. Uh, the form is now closed to self-report your attendance. We also have, and you'll find in the slide deck, you can look up your name. You can see how many minutes you actually spent in the Zoom session. So this is a, uh, this is a automated. Uh, if you disagree with what you find, uh, let us know. But uh, this t tends to be very reliable. So um, you have you should be able to find your name. Don't try to do it now. You can look up the slides. Uh, and actually, I'm going to share these slides uh, directly in the uh, Zoom chat. It is eight megabytes, so it is a big file. Um, Anna Minta shared table three, potential areas of integration among surveillance support functions. I'm going to turn to Anna quickly so she can say good morning, uh, good afternoon or good evening, and uh, so she can tell us uh, what uh, is this table that she shared and how it can be useful to participants. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to have you all back. Um, it was great to work with you all yesterday, and I look forward to continuing to work with you. This table is from the comprehensive VPD strategy that we went over yesterday and is the main document for our course. So hopefully you've all had a chance to read it already. Um, but there were a lot of questions about integration yesterday, which is very um, good. Uh, it shows that you all are thinking about this in, the, um, in a very good way. So I just wanted to put this here to remind you about um, this particular table that shows you some examples of how surveillance support functions can be integrated. And it's something for you to uh, look over as you're thinking up questions. I'll just uh, pick out one or two. For example, there were a lot of questions yesterday about workforce capacity and how to improve it. So that's the third row. And some examples here are training or capacity building at all levels. And then staff for core functions, and these, and including case detection, notification, investigation, reporting, epidemic preparedness. Because, for example, there were questions yesterday about how to increase workforce capacity. How can people talk to their Ministry of Health about why it's important and what needs to be done and what kind of budget would be needed? So if you look at this table, it can give you some ideas to help support you for um, your action plan as you go along. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Anna. And uh, so um, we have some good news. Yesterday, as you recall, there were 10 groups and all 10 groups had their rapporteurs uh, submit uh, notes. Now, this says nothing about the quality of the notes, the relevance, but it does say something about the diligence involved in 10 groups that came together for the very first time and managed to uh, submit notes uh, by the deadline, so by midnight last night, uh, Geneva. So you can access all of the submitted uh, rapporteur notes. Uh, Charlotte will post, of course, the uh, uh, the link. This link has been shared again many times before. You can see the different uh, uh, the different uh, groups. Um, and now we go into the session one feedback. So here is what you told us. So first of all, 82 people uh, took the time to answer the session one feedback. If you're in the room and so you're here, you're, you're showing some uh, commitment and motivation and you're saying, what is this session one feedback? Check your emails. Uh, unfortunately, the deadline is passed. So 87, uh, almost 88% of you uh, said that you attended um, uh, fully all three hours. Uh, of course, we have the Zoom records to verify that uh, as well. In addition to what you reported, we'll be checking that. And please, if there's a discrepancy, you may be hearing from us receiving a message for from us asking you to explain how come you said you were there when the Zoom records show that uh, you were not, uh, for example. Uh, now, the um, we ask you to uh, what you worked on uh, today and which area, um, which challenge uh, you worked on. And most of you worked on sustainable financing and workforce. You can see all of the others are tiny uh, by comparison. Then we asked you about your overall course experience, and you can see there's a, a couple of you know, very low ratings, uh, just one person, and then you can see very nice bell curve uh, between six and 10, more towards the uh, nine and 10 than the, uh, uh, than the six even. This is quite exceptional in uh, digital learning. Now, 
what you told us in the qualitative feedback, uh, you can see some of the feedback here. I'm obviously not going to read it all because uh, you have the slides, you can take the time. And this is actually just a sliver of the feedback. We tried to make it representative of what so many of you said. So for example, uh, saying it was interactive and practical, many of you said that. So we've in, that's why we've included this particular quote, for example. Um, now, motivation and commitment, we believe are key both to learning and performance. And so, this is actually the only uh, question that got 100% yeses. Everyone said that the first session increased their motivation and uh, commitment. That alone is, again, quite remarkable. We also asked you, how does this compare to a physical workshop? Of course, part of a, the beauty of a physical workshop is that there's usually travel involved, uh, hopefully a nice hotel, uh, time, quality time to spend with colleagues, um, uh, per diem as well. Uh, none of that is included, and yet um, here is the feedback you said you gave. Uh, it's almost completely a replacement of face-to-face -face workshop. It feels so connected as if we were physically together. Even though it was virtual, it was more practical, and I met my expectation like a physical learning environment. Now, we actually believe our goal at the Geneva Learning Foundation is actually to augment the uh, uh, experience so that it is better uh, than the uh, what we can do in the physical world because of the affordances of digital technologies, but very interesting to see this, uh, this feedback. Um, now, the relevance of, this, of session one to your real-world challenges, Almost everyone, we're looking at the person who said no <laughs> um, and, um, and maybe reaching out to them to better understand what went wrong, uh, what, what we could have done better. Um, what's interesting too is that you have the same process but experienced very differently. So you could say, uh, breakout, one person says breakout room discussions did not help much. And the other person found that actually discussing in small groups, there's a greater opportunity to remove shyness, uh, unlike the discussion in large groups. So you can see differing perspectives. And this person had a particular balanced perspective, just sort of acknowledging the, the, the strengths of each, um, each modality. So the plenary, good to introduce uh, to the program. Breakout groups, good for experience sharing and peer learning. Remote coffee, good for meeting and networking with, uh, uh, with, uh, with colleagues. Um, what we said was what you what you preferred about the different learning contexts or modalities and why uh, is exemplified here. Um, and then we also asked you, did you learn something new that made you think differently? So this is what we call Eureka moments. And you can see almost 93% said yes. Uh, and uh, so what were these, uh, these moments of significant learning? Um, realizing that we have solutions to the challenges, realizing that every person counts, every idea counts, every step counts, realizing that VPD surveillance is a critical block of an immunization program, um, realizing every country has an issue in VPD surveillance, and the main issue is no country owns disease surveillance, and most of the time it's partner dependent. Um, Anna Minta's presentation was illuminating. No one size fits all. You have to put it in the context of experience uh, of, of, of each country. And then uh, one of my favorite quotes, experience, experiential learning is a technical term, is the best thing ever. Now, today's session addressed important issues for my organization. Almost all of you again said yes. Um, will you use what you gain from today's session? Again, uh, yes. And now there were some suggestions for improvement. Um, so one was uh, encouraging Encouraging people to switch on their webcams when making comments or presentation. Um, the um, needing one senior team member to provide facilitation, and then uh, some participants did not look at messages in chat. Now, the one about little time is given. If we ask you, what is the biggest problem, the biggest barrier for you to participate in online learning? Most of you will say, I do not have the time. But when we shorten the time, you are the first to come back and say, we wanted more time, which you do not have. So there's a, an interesting paradox that has been researched in online learning and the methodology you experience, the fact that we make it very short and leave you thirsting for more is the deliberate uh, response to that uh, contradiction or paradox. Uh, and in fact, you can see 
more time. Um, the, typically, the, the, the response from learners is we want more content, we want more time, but then if we offer more content or more time, no one has time for it. Um, and then some things that people ask for, uh, we're already doing. So for example, uh, one person said, uh, everything was good, only we need materials on VPD surveillance for reference. Well, guess what? <laughs> we made available last Monday, so eight days ago, uh, a Dropbox folder that contains uh, uh, the best available resources from the World Health Organization on uh, VPD surveillance. Uh, second, uh, the challenges from each country should be li listed in each group and then summarized and distributed. Well, in the slide deck uh, that was shared yesterday and again in the session two slide deck, you will find the challenges from each country that were submitted by, uh, by course participants. And then the video and audio records of today's session have also been shared by, uh, in, the Telegram, uh, in the Telegram channel. So uh, as you can see, in some cases we're still, you know, and this is uh, completely understandable, as you're struggling to make sense of how to navigate this learning system, uh, you may not have seen everything yet, and that is fine. Now, um, we have three minutes uh, remaining in this uh, segment before we move to best practices. So I'd like to turn uh, one to, uh, let's start with Anna. Uh, having listened to this feedback, Anna, what is, what do you make of this? How do you make sense of what participants, learners are telling us in response to, um, to, session, uh, to, to session one on uh, Monday? And then if there's anyone else in the room who'd like to share uh, firsthand, react to uh, this feedback, would love to hear from you as well. Please raise your hand. You should now know how it works. Anna? Hello again. Yes, I'm, I'm really happy to see this feedback. And I think overall, the participants, you're telling us that you are um, learning from the experience and you're appreciating the opportunity to hear about the strategy and think about and learn with your colleagues about how you can apply the global VPD comprehensive strategy to your personal country context. So I'm really happy to hear this. I think you're in great shape as you proceed with your action plan to put into words and really formulate what you started thinking about. Um, so, and I think um, a lot of the suggestions we, uh, Reda has gone over how we can um, improve on those and also the resources that you have. Uh, today, we'll also be adding some additional resources to give, um, for example, some more background on basic surveillance concepts, uh, because those were some questions that came up from yesterday. And so you'll find those in the Dropbox as well. 